fun live. I'm so glad you could join me today. Um, got some things we can talk about. If you can hear my voice, I'm still not, the voice is still not back yet. I am feeling fine. I've had negative tests and all that with the COVID. Um, go ahead and silence that. Um, but all that to say, I'm going to have to defer the song. <coughs> Excuse me. This is long till next week or until I can sing better. But I do have something I want to sing for you. It's just giving thanks to you guys for um, for your generous donations. And um, we do have $120 to donate to, I believe we're going to the Shriners Hospital for Children this uh, month. And in the, yeah, I have been um, matching, just that a minute. I have been matching the funds to Samaritan's um, purse for the hospital, the field hospital in the Ukraine. But since then, another situation has come up that's near and dear to my heart. So, um, and still donating to the same organization, but I'm going to defer the funds to help people in Kentucky. Um, in case you've seen any of that, I'm, I, I'm not going to go into any details here, but um, our own people are suffering, and I, I am going to default my matching funds for this time around just to let you know, uh, and then we'll go back to supporting what's going on in Ukraine, but um, we have some really great friends in our chat from Kentucky, um, particularly I'm thinking of Bobby Preston and uh, some very near and dear friends to my heart live there. I don't believe any of them have been affected directly by the flooding uh, from these storms, but I just want to go ahead and, and do that. All right, got my tea handy so I can keep talking. Um, let me go ahead and start off by saying hello to some of you folks in the chat. Charlotte, so glad to have you here. Thank you so much for being the first in the chat today. And so glad you can join us. And Angie, it's good to see you. And Leon, um, he says it's a nice day in Aldershot. Leon just recently moved from the Isle of Wight. So, um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm so sorry. So, so glad that things are, hopefully things are working. And you're settling into your new home, um, Leon. Um, it's good to see you in the chat, Kelly. Doing well, um, getting some work done this week. Um, Alana um, says, Sunshine here in Tennessee. Good morning to y'all. And um, yes, feeling better. Just, it's just, just can't talk or sing. Um, singing is particularly hard because when you sing, you take big deep breaths and that will just set me off into a coughing fit so I didn't think that would bless anybody today um oh great good for you Kelly looks like you're getting a lot done there um we have Judy she says happy Friday to everyone um thank you Judy for your kind words you're so sweet and um this is Kelly says her mom's birthday is September 8th yeah we had we had two two of my children had birthdays this past week, and um, uh, pretty amazing. <laughs> this time is just flying here. I hope, I hope um, your mom's birthday is is great, Kelly. Um, oh, thank you, Alana, for the reminder. If you could hit the thumbs up, that would help the little bots that don't really have minds behind the scene to recommend this video to others and maybe grow crochet a little bit further in the right direction. Um, we have Rovilla in the chat. She's finally got your live. Yes, Rovilla, so glad you could join us. And uh, Wanda Gordon, my North Carolina friend, so glad to see you in our chat. Um, and thank you for your prayers. Um, my my daughter, one of my daughter-in-law's mom had mom had to be rushed to the ER last night. So <coughs> excuse me, she's okay. Um, had to have her appendix out. So. Um, you know, you never know. You just never, never know. We got that word late last night as we were going to bed. All right. Hannah has sent me. Ah, uh, sorry about that, Hannah. Hannah's having trouble with the reception. Um, it, it might be the internet there, sweetheart. Um, I've had lots of trouble with that in the past. Um, all right. Let's see. Yeah, Wanda says praying for everyone in Kentucky. Absolutely. I cannot imagine um, 
what they must be going through. And Jan, so good to have you. And Red Hooked, looking forward to, to meeting you, my friend, in, in Pittsburgh. Um, she says, I'm working overtime again, so I'll be listening. I'll be counting down to the Pittsburgh Fiber Fest. Yeah, um, if you look it up online, it goes by a lot of different names. But um, I'll go ahead <coughs> and hit on that right now. I'm going to be teaching classes at the Pittsburgh Creative Arts Festival. Registration is still open. There are still some slots. Um, my classes are filling, which is really good. These are going to be the biggest classes so far this season. I'm going to be teaching I Love Crochet Cables class on August 25th. I believe that's around 4 p.m. I'll be driving. I'll be leaving here that day. And um, on the next day, which is a Friday, um, I'm going to be teaching two classes, um, Fun Fabric Crochet for Beginners and a big and bold cables class. The big and bold cables class is almost filled. So if you're interested in any of those, um, you know, check it out online. You can still sign up and I believe you can still get hotel reservations at the Green Tree, uh, uh, the Green Tree, Pennsylvania, um, at the Double Tree Hilton. Boy, that's confusing. Tree, tree, tree. It's the Double Tree by Hilton outside of Pittsburgh in Green Bay, Pennsylvania. They're going to have three ballrooms filled with vendors and a couple of um, additional trailers uh, full of yarn, supplying yarn. So lots of yarn vendors are going to be there. I'm looking forward to it. This will be my first time going. And just to let you know, the fees for taking these classes is the cheapest I've seen anywhere. It's only like $35 a class. So, I mean, it really is very, very technical. And if there's anybody out there, <coughs> excuse me, anybody out there who lives in the Pittsburgh area and you want to go to the station, which it's a, it's a day between the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Cincinnati Reds. And I bought the ticket, but I'm thinking that <clears throat> since I'm still recovering a bit, I'm going to have to lay low and not do two trips to Pittsburgh in the same week. It is the 21st of August. If anybody's interested, I have one ticket. I'm willing to transfer that to you. You just have to communicate with me. <clears throat> Send me an email to bonniebaby.com and just say I'm interested in the stitch and pitch. Um, first come, first serve. I didn't get any takers last week, so I still have to pick. If any, anybody interested in it by this week, I may just, um, you give it to one of the organizers to give away. So, um, just to let you know, um, let me take a little sip here. Okay. Crochet mama wants to know if I'm a certified crochet instructor and wondering if it's worth it. I think it is. Um, I paid much more for classes. And yes, I have completed both courses of the Craft Yarn Council of America's um, crochet certification for teachers, if that means anything to you. Um, been crocheting for more than 50 years. Don't do the math. I started before I was born, just to let you know. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, it's it's up to you whether it's, it's worth it or not, quite honestly. Um, <coughs> Excuse me again. Oh, thank you, Archer and Ace. You just, I'm going to start a new, um, let me go ahead and write that down. I'm going to start a new um, tally for, for the next time on your donations here. So thank you for getting us off on to that next one. All right. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, again, it's a, it's really up to you. It's whatever value you place on attending the classes. I, I think just, uh, even if you go to these conferences and you don't take any classes, I mean, you may know everything I have to teach. And in that case, you probably want to do something else like just go shopping. Um, and I'm, I'm totally okay with that. That's all I did for my first couple of conferences. Um, actually, for the first conference, I didn't take any classes. I just attended and was overwhelmed by the activities. Um, just the shopping alone will be fantastic. I believe they open at 9, um, starting on Thursday, 9 or 10. So, I mean, 
and there are going to be three ballrooms of vendors. That's a lot of yarn. That's a lot of a lot of crafting things. Um, and this also, this particular festival, doesn't just um, address crocheters and knitters, but also spinners, and um, you know people who are yarn dyers. Um, if you're interested, like interested in learning how to spin yarn and things like that, I'm sure they're going to have vendors there. You can check. The, uh, on the video description below, I do have a link you can check to see who is going to be there. There's a whole list of the vendors. I think there are over 40 of them, maybe between 40 and 50. That's a lot. And um, yeah, and you can see what classes are also going to be classes on spinning and dyeing and, you know, carding and doing all these other things to, to wool and fiber that I, I will never plan to get into because I'm just too busy crocheting or knitting but um but definitely check that out i'm i'm so looking forward to this <coughs> um all right um hey lynn it's good to see you in the chat my friend lynn from from uh, chicago and um and denise is in the chat too uh she says hope all are well and have had a good week lovely and sunny day here in Salisbury, UK, and it's 16.45, so that means it is 4.45, where, 4.45 p.m., really? Wow, um, it seems a little off, but anyway, uh, maybe I'm the one who's off. Um, okay, I'm not sure I understand the question here. Um, Kelly Hart wants to know if I'm going to do the I can't believe it's cable on tutorial. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly which one you're referring to, Kelly. I'm sorry, but um, you can always contact me, bonniebayatme.com, and we can, you know, go back and forth more on that um, to find, so I can try to answer that question for you. Um, <coughs> oh, thank you for your blessings, Lynn. You are so sweet. And Lashira? Crochet, thanks for being here and joining our little group. And um, and you guys are just so welcome. Michelle, so good morning, everyone. It's a perfect 73 degree Fahrenheit and sunny day here in Helena, Montana. Oh, that does sound like a nice temperature. Um, it's been a warmer side here, but last night we got some wonderful storms. And just I don't know, I just love it when a storm is approaching because it just cools the air and I just love to hear the trees and the, and the even the lightning. We were sitting outside on the porch at night with some friends and, and you could see the, the um, in the distance you can see the night sky kind of lighting up um, and I just like that. I guess growing up in South Florida where you get thunderstorms just about every day um, during the summer, uh, I just, uh, I just love love to see them if i don't have to go away or drive in it for sure but i just love love to see to see them build and to to just enjoy the, the cool air and the rain it's just so want so much of them and we also have two little um keeping an eye on them too um we have another set of twin fawns that are oftentimes around in our yard um with their mama and um it's just kind of cool to see that. So far, they have not grown yet. So maybe spreading that uh, garlic. <laughs> We've been talking about this off and on this summer. I, I think the garlic and the oregano spices are keeping them away, working far better than the soap. Um, the crows just enjoyed that soap that I put out there. They thought it was candy for them. Crazy animals. Let's see. Oh, we have Mary and Gary Snyder in the chat. Hey, it's good to have you and Crochet Mama. And um, and Najla, hey, um, yes, she says, yes, I'm, I've am i made it after all these weeks, finally here. So glad to have you in our chat. And um, Ms. Debbie L.W. from California and Jane Scott. <clears throat> I'm going backwards here. And Rebecca. Yeah, thank you, Rebecca. I, I do feel good. You know, it's just... Uh, you know the throat when you get a cold, and I guess it goes for COVID too. <coughs> it's like the last thing that goes away or gets better is your throat. So by the time, you know, you're feeling better, you sound horrible, but you, you feel fine, you know. But 
that's that's the part that I've been in and I've been thankful to be in a, in a small business at home here where I could just sit and not talk and just work on the computer that's been a real blessing to me so this is the most I've probably spoken all week long um, oh good is that um, yay my, my daughter-in-law mom is going to get to come home from the hospital today yay. it's amazing we had surgery at 2 in the morning and she's coming home, so that is wonderful. Uh, yeah, looks like it's a little choppy here too, Hannah, so I'm not sure what's with that. Um, yeah, thank you for your, your well wishes, Lynn. And let's see, make sure I don't miss anybody. Yeah, Chrissy done Wanda, my way with Wanda. Hey, Wanda, so good to have you back. Hope you're doing well with all your adventures out there on the road. Um, Wanda's our truck driver who keeps us all supplied with what we need and I tell you what our world does not does not move without people like Wanda so Wanda thank you again for what you do and Angela from Parkville Maryland Angela you're local I don't know if part where Parkville how how close you are to Montgomery County Maryland but let me go ahead <coughs> I have a little bit of an announcement um I've been in touch with the the um, person who is the the chair person for the crochet um, division in the Home Arts Building at the Montgomery County Agricultural Fair. And if you are in Montgomery County, Maryland, or even outside the county, I believe you can still enter your things, your your, your you know your your cakes, your your crochet, whatever. Um, and I have a book that I wrote a few years ago. It's a very, very simple to read, uh, inexpensive book. It's on Amazon. Um, you can just go to Amazon and look at Winning at the Fair. And um, it's just a book on trying to put you over the edge if you've never tried entering your crocheted things in the local fair. And um, it, it just kind of talks a little bit about my experience. And... Um, uh, and I learned a little bit over the years of participating in these and was really blessed to get the best in show a number of times. And this was before I started designing. And it was because, my story is in here, it was because of entering in the local fair that I'm even sitting here now doing design work. It's because people thought that it was a professional design and, and it was just something I came up with. And... Um, Anyway, you can read about that. I think it's only like five or six bucks off of Amazon. Um, so you can check that out if you're looking for the encouragement. You don't have to be super professional or perfect or any of that. Um, and I just encourage even children. I give two special awards at our at our um, fair. And I think they're pretty nice. It's, it's a framed certificate to the winner. Um, and it also has a... Um, a little gift card from a local craft store for 50 bucks. I mean, what's not to like about that? You can buy 50 bucks worth of yarn. Um, but I give one for the best children's or youth category, the best item. And then I also give one in the adult category for the best original design. It has to be something that's an original design. And I know it's a little late to be telling you this because um, we will begin taking entries on this coming Thursday. I believe it is Thursday, Friday, but do check if you're in my county, in Montgomery County, Maryland. <coughs> Excuse me. I felt good. Um, definitely go to the catalog that's online. You can, um, if you need that information, you can just email me, bonniebayatme.com, and I can get that to you. Um, check make sure what the dates and the times are because it's very specific but I do know that they're looking for them. they asked me to volunteer Thursday and Friday but since that involves a lot of talking I just said I really can't do it this year but I could be there for the judging on Sunday I'm not a judge um, for these things I don't think they would want me to be a judge because the way I judge is different than the way they would judge because I know a little bit more about crochet than a lot of these judges do um, but um, I will be there as the things are being judged. So I'll be able to see everything in the different categories. And um, I I'm going to try to make, maybe even make uh, a film. I can't, I don't know if they're going to let me 
do that or not, but I would love to do some behind the scenes um, video footage um, of what it's like to see a contest like this because we know what the judges are looking for. It helps us to know, oh, now I know what to do for next year. But whatever you do, if you decide to enter um, in your county or your state fair, there's one thing that you must, must be very careful to do. And this is where, um, and I have some experience with this. I went down in flames on this one, and that is weave in all your ends. Even if you think you have all your ends woven in, and I thought I had all my ends woven in, there was one strand that somebody saw at some point. And then um, that was the difference between best of show and and not best of show. Uh, yeah, that's what the, um, the um, chairperson told me. And I'm like, really? Oh my goodness. So that's why I'm telling you guys, weave in those ends. It's, it's huge if you're sending your things off to be judged. And also make sure that they are clean. If they smell like cigarette smoke, animals, or anything like that, a lot of times they will not accept them because those smells when placed next to other items will permeate into the other garments and items as well. So make sure when you bring these things, they need to be clean and it needs to be a rule for Montgomery County is it had to have been completed within this year. You can't take something that you won a grand prize 20 years ago and put it into the fair. It has to be something you made recently. So that is a, um, a rule at least locally here. I, I don't know how that, that goes with um, other other fairs, but I think that's a pretty common one. So anyway, it is not too late to even begin working on things that you're entering in your fairs, because a lot of fairs, like um, when I'm in South Carolina, the um, state fair doesn't even start until October. So you got, well, let's see. Okay, August, September, October. So still three months, and you could easily... Well, you could probably do a throw or something like that. And I will say that <clears throat> if you do a project with a lot of cabling and high, highly texturized stitches that I love to use, um, that gets extra points on the judging sheet. So the complexity of your projects is a plus if you do, especially if they're done well. So um, that's just something um, to consider. Okay. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. Uh, let's see. So thank you for putting Parkville, Maryland in there, uh, Angela, because that just prompted that. Uh, let's see. Oh, we have Jane Chapman from a steamy Massachusetts. She says, glad you're feeling well, Bonnie. Thank you, Jane. And, um, oh, thank you, Denise. Um, you're giving me another second here. Um, Denise says, um, she likes my top. Well, this is this is the top that is coming on Monday, and I'll try to put it in the uh, watch channel, my my paid subscriber channel, the watch .com channel, a little bit early. I'll see if I can get it, but I'm still waiting for both the um, the uh, translations, and I'm waiting for the edits to come back from my editor. So um, she's had a busy week this week. So um, as soon as I do, I will try to get that uploaded to you. Um, this is using a DK weight yarn. So it goes a little bit faster than the sock weight yarn. And, and this, the yarn that I used here is self-striping. So that's why it looks kind of wild with the color changes and everything. I mean, you can use this or you can use the same color as the base. Or, you know, you could even control how the stripes come out if you have DK weight yarn and you just want to, um, you know, control the stripes and you can make it look your, whatever you want to do. It was a lot of fun using this yarn because it's kind of a mystery as to what's going to happen with it. And that's just kind of fun. So it's one of those things I think where it's, um, it, it's not just fun to wear, but it's fun to make. The journey is fun getting there. And the, the body here is, is something if you've done any of my other tops like the one behind me with the soft weight yarn this is just the waddle stitch for the body I just haven't found anything better than that as far as to 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 have um, ease where you need where you need it um, so anyway and the yarn that I used is not as stretchy as the universal yarn this is kind of an older design I've been holding on to and the um, the yarn you could probably, you know, substitute any 
uh, number three or even number two weight yarn for this. But um, anyway, all the information is coming on Monday. I have the video, the complete video tutorial. And of course, you know, if you are a watch subscriber, you will have the, the pattern as a complimentary um, pattern on your site. Um, and if you're not a watch member, the pattern will be available in my Lovecraft store as well as in my Etsy store, just to let you know. And um, really, 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 um, I just really enjoyed wearing this at the conference. It, it's, it's a lot more comfortable than I thought it would be. <coughs> and it is made of 100% um, cotton. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, Monica um, in the chat from Mexico. Well, welcome. Hola, amigo. I'm so glad to have other folks in our chat, even if my Spanish is terrible. Um, I just so appreciate you all. Mm. So, um, so Catherine says, um, healing well here in Yellville, Arkansas. Thank you for your prayers. Catherine, I'm so glad to hear your news today. Catherine, it's okay to say you know, she does not have to do, go for, for treatment following her, her cancer surgery. So Catherine, we are thrilled for you, my friend. It is just such exciting news. Um, it, I, I wish there was a, a good news channel <laughs> on TV because it seems like whenever you hear news, you know, it's all bad. It's all negative because that's what sells. But... We need to start a good news channel somewhere. Just, you know, Catherine has great news. I mean, just have a great news channel. Uh, that would be, maybe I'll start one. Hannah, what do you think? Should we start a good news channel? Um, only good news allowed. It would change the outlook on everybody's world. Um, and Nodula says, um, even though working too much, I've time to crochet. I've done a mix between Abigail Shaw and Liberty Shaw for a newborn named Eleanor, born six weeks early. Just pray for her health. Wow. Well, that is great of you to, to make um, make something for them like that. But, um, yeah, I hope that baby does well. It's amazing what medicine you know can do these days. But, um, yeah, I love your attitude, Najula, just how you know, even though you're working hard, you have time to crochet. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's kind of funny. I have, I'm going to go off on a tangent here for just a second. Um, it's so funny how whenever I'm sitting in a doctor's office, I, I, as I've done for many times during the years with, um, with uh, my mom or my mother-in-law or, or, or even for myself at times, and um, people see you sitting there crocheting knitting and, and they're like, oh, I wish I had time to do that. And I try not to laugh. I try to be nice and pleasant, but in my head... My head is thinking, well, silly, put down that dumb magazine and pick up a hook and yarn. You've got the time. It's just a matter of what you do with it. I mean, if you think about, if we got a, if we got a dollar for every hour of our life that we waste, I mean, like, even in a day, I mean, we'd have a quite a you know, the people waste a lot of time in, in ways that they think, you know. Um, and I, and I'm not kicking people for that. I, it's just, it's just the way the world is, you know? And if, um, anyway, all that to say is a lot of the times, um, even when I was raising five children and taking care of my mom and I was homeschooling too, and I didn't have a lot of time like, like I do now for crochet and I wasn't doing a business, thank God, because I, I would not have done them both justice, but you know, every so often I would work on a design or crochet something. Um, it was usually when I was in a car, or in our case, a van, um, traveling for eight or nine hours on the road, or in a doctor's office with a child, or with my mom, or, you know, there's a lot of times, uh, I, I would just keep a basket handy, and there was never a rush to finish anything, but I would just snatch, you know, 10 minutes here, 20 minutes there, if I knew there was going to be some downtime where it wasn't appropriate to really do anything else. Uh, rather than waste my brain on a, on a magazine, you know, that, that I normally wouldn't read anyway, or watching some awful television show that are sometimes on in those offices, I'm like, 
I don't want to know about that, you know. Um, so I can pull out my yarn and my hook and I can just work on my stuff, you know, or even read a good book. That's another good use of time, I think. Uh, something that's helping the, you know, helping you to grow. Um, but anyway, okay, I'm opinionated. You know it. But anyway. Um, let's see. <coughs> Anna sent me another question. NS is wondering if you have a crochet collar to put over a plain sweatshirt. Hmm. You know, um, I don't have something that's a collar only, but what you could do is any of the tops, you know, the beginning tops, uh, you know, the collars to these tops, you can just crochet the collar and stop. Um, I also have some, uh, if you go on my channel under the playlist, I have um, like capes that have a decorative uh, collar and then lace below that. You can take any of those and just do the collar if that's what you want. I think that's a fun idea. Um, I would really dress up a sweatshirt for sure. But yeah, let me know if you do something with that. Um, Oh, thank you, Stephanie. She says, I'm wishing, I hope I feel better today. Thank you so much. I do feel better. I just don't sound better, which is why I can't sing, which is kind of a bummer. But anyway, <coughs> then we have Wanda X. Um, she says, finally caught a live watching from central Wisconsin. Hope everyone is well. Thank you, Wanda, for joining us. And, um, and Little Light of Mind says, I'm just very crocheting Bonnie's Winter Cabled Throw. It's so much fun. Couldn't do it without the video help, though. I'm so glad you're enjoying that one, Little Light of Light. That was one of my favorites um, to, to, to design. Um, and that one is definitely not for the faint of heart. There's a lot going on in every row. So you really have to visualize and intuitively understand a lot of these cables before you start something like that. But that was so much fun. I need to do some more like that. And I did, I think I told you last time, I did finish, I can't show it to you yet. I did finish that peel throw and I've got work. I've got, I've got to do all the writing and all on it, but um, I'm really happy with the way it came out. And I really am happy with the, um, with the yarn that I used, and I'm going to use that as a segue <coughs> into some things that are coming to my channel probably early this fall. And they came out of um, the video that's coming next week on the yarns from Universal Yarn. They sent me another box, and they wanted me to just, you know, see what I thought. And I made a video with my honest opinion. Because I'm not being paid to say, these are amazing. I'm not being paid to say anything like that. Um, they just asked me to give my evaluation, and which is great because I keep my, metaphorically speaking, I keep my own voice and I don't have to be told how to sell something. I'm not trying to sell any of this. They just want an evaluation. Okay. But anyway, one of the yarns is called Fluffily. And let me tell you what this is made of. You'll, you'll learn more about it in the video. It's a blend of 40% cotton, 30% polyester, 20% acrylic, and 10% wool, which is an interesting combination. <coughs> I'm going to give you the, okay, 150 grams, 420 meters was the, the length of this cake. Okay. Uh, I really liked it. I ended up just making a whole project, which is one cake of yarn. This is a DK weight. Can you see? It's very fluffy, very, very, very soft. And this is going to make a really, let me go ahead and put it on for you. It's going to make a really fun towel. I'm not going to keep it on very much right now because it's, it's the summertime and this is a winter garment. But, you know, this is a really fun, easy, it comes together quickly. And, you know, maybe a really nice uh, idea for you know, gifts for Christmas, you know, something that's, you know, kind of quick and easy and kind of a low investment. I don't know if you guys think of that way. I do. <laughs> um, and another thing, another yarn that I really, I really liked. Um, it's not perfect. 
okay, I'll say that it's called it's a universal yarn called Offbeat. I'll show you the label, but I'll read it to you first. It's a um, 90% acrylic, 10% alpaca. Each cake has 586 yards, which is a very, very generous amount of yarn. Now this is um, one of those yarns that <coughs> the colors change and they change pretty dramatically. And But I, I got an entire project out of this. So what do you think about that? This is just one cake of this yarn. Again, it's 90% acrylic, 10% alpaca. This feels amazing. Um, there was one point where there was a knot in this. As you know, these kind of yarn changing, color changing yarns, unfortunately have that every so often. Um, there's some that are far worse than others, but there was one knot, but I will say that you can't really tell because I think it kind of kept within the same color bracket, um, although it may not have been perfect. So, I mean, like I said, it has its issues, okay? Whenever you deal with yarns like this, but, you know, this is going to be fun to wear. This is going to be fun to wear this year, this fall. I mean, this is going to be perfect for the fall colors. A lot of the yarns I'm talking about, this is in, a, in another week and a half or so. When the video comes out, it has featuring a lot of their fall, fall colors. So, anyway, this is also a DK. Let me, let me double check to make sure this is a DK weight. So I must be find. Okay, let me look, looking, looking, looking. A lot of these yarns are made in Turkey, so they don't use. The, okay, it's a fine. <coughs> okay, so I used an H. So I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this as a number two um, in weight. They're calling it fine, but the thickness. Is really like a number two, like a sport weight yarn. So, whew, there we go. And let me see who else. Who else is in our chat that I have? Oh, we have Brad Small. Great to see, see you in the chat, Linda. And um, he says, "Better late than never." You're welcome anytime, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> Renee, you're, you're so funny. She said. Thank you for your sweet comment there. I'm not going to read it, but um, I, I'm not going to read it out loud, but thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and Hannah just sent me a quick uh, crochet mama wants to know, where did you get the yarn for the shawl that I just showed? Honestly, I don't know. Um, you could probably get it online. You, um, I don't know what yarns are carried in your local stores. Um, some people carry universal yarns. Um, I know a lot of, um, you know, smaller local yarn stores, you know, that are like independently owned. These are not the Michaels and places like that, but you know, like, uh, you know, small mom and pop stores might carry it, but I, I would look online. You can go to universal yarn. Let me see if they have their, um, I will have more information coming forth on this. Um, let, let me, let me look um, I'd have to, I'd have to, it'd take me a bit to, to figure it out, but if you just Google, do a Google search for universal yarns, and this yarn is called Offbeat. If you do a quick Google search, I'm sure you can find it easily, and you might even find it at some of these larger discount houses like Jimmy Beans or um, maybe even La Crosse. So, you know, you can check out some of the, you know, the bigger online distributors. Um, or even directly from Universal Yarn. So, and, and they are they are based out of uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. So just to let you know, even though the yarn was manufactured in Turkey, the company that that's oversees a lot of that is is in the, within the U.S. And Sheila wants to know <coughs> if I know where the next Crochet Guild of America conference will be next year. Um, yes, I do. The only glitch is whether it's going to happen next year. So, so if I'll tell you where it's going to be, if it happens, which we're hoping it will, 
Um, it just hasn't been organized yet. Usually things are organized far in advance, but I'm going to use the excuse COVID and everything. Um, a lot of things have been up in the air. If it does happen, and I'm hoping and praying that it does, it will be in Manchester, New Hampshire. So I don't know how far that is from you, but um, it's, it's a nice drive for me. It's about a nine to 10 hour drive for me and planning on packing that car to the gills. Um, because if I can ever travel, like a day's travel instead of flying, I, I prefer to do that because I do like to serve <coughs> if I have the energy, if, if I get to teach and all that, but because um, oftentimes I will bring my my lighting kits and, um, and do a lot of the photography for the fashion show and things like that. That didn't really happen this year. Um, there really wasn't somebody to do it and I was not able to haul all of that stuff on the plane. Um, I was already carrying about 140 pounds in gear between the two suitcases and stuff for classes and but anyway, um, Hannah, sure, says, I'd love to go to the CGO conference next year. I love New Hampshire. Yes, yes, yes. And if, guys, if it happens in New Hampshire next year, we've got to have dinner every night at the Port Pie Company. So <laughs> that's where I'm going to be eating. So um, it, Portland Pie Company has the absolute most amazing pizzas. I know they're not, I mean, I like other people's pizza. I like a lot of different pizzas. I'm not saying this is the one and only because I'll eat just about any pizza actually, but um, the P Portland Pie Company is wonderful and they, they started coming out with um, cauliflower crust and all of that. I mean, their regular crust is amazing too. So, I mean, if you want to be even health conscious, you can pretend you're being health conscious and eat their as well but uh, it's just a really delightful down home kind of a place um, and if any of you all are interested in seeing that part of the country um, what we did the last time we went or one of the last times we went to New Hampshire um, and my neighbor friend came with me my daughter Hannah and my daughter Becky and my son Joseph we all drove up a few days early and we camped in the White Mountain had an amazing time got to see the flume and um, all sorts of all sorts of sites um, driving through the White Mountains. So, um, so if that's something that interests you, um, pencil it in on your calendar. And as soon as it is firmed up, I will definitely let you know. It may take a little while to to find out. Um, and Hannah, you, we'll just get get somebody else to help you know with what you're doing. And um, you, you can, I want you to come, sweetheart. I think most people would want to meet you uh, just as much as if, you know, if not more so than meeting me. So that would be, that would be great. I would love that. Um, what's this crochet mama? He says, no way. I don't know if that's to me or not. No way you're older than me. If you're 54, crochet mama, I got you beat by at least five years. That's all I'll say. Yeah. Yeah, I'm older than you, baby. <laughs> I feel it. I feel it inside. Um, but thank you if that's for me. Thank you so much. Um, uh, okay, hold on a second. I'm catching up. Oh, okay. Okay, Archer and he says, I'm taking a class in Pittsburgh with Bonnie. I'll know I'll learn something wonderful. I hope so, Archer and Ace, but if you're following the, honestly, if you guys are following the videos, I mean, there's really nothing new under the sun, but, but what's really fun about the in-person classes is <coughs> instead of guessing that you're doing something right or wrong, you know, we can give each other immediate feedback and that's what's really fun and, and we blow through these, these um, stitches fast. I mean, it's, we, we cover, you know, ground quickly you know we try not to let our feet touch the ground too much as we're going through this but but I do try to answer people's questions and um, it's, it's a lot of fun you know I, I and it's just and the other thing I wanted to tell you about the conferences and the classes is just hanging out with these other people is is just so encouraging or at least it was for me every time I've done it so it 
that that's what it is for me. It's just meeting the people there. Um, oh, Swati's in the chat. She says, headed to PT again as usual, but just wanted to pop in for a hot minute to say hi to everyone. Happy Friday. Thank goodness. I worked nearly 130 hours in the last two weeks and no crochet either. Oh my gosh, goodness. Swati, that's a lot of hours. That's, that's a 65 hour weeks. That's insane. Oh my goodness. Well, you get some downtime, girl. You need to put your feet up and, and, and take a day off. That's, that's awful. Oh, don't want you to burn out, my friend. All right, got a lot going on in the chat here. Let me see if I um, just want to make sure I don't have anything else. I think I've covered, <coughs> I've covered my agenda. So let me try to <coughs> let me get a sip here. Mm. All right. Um, oh, we have Laura Shelton from the Inner Banks of North Carolina. I know where that is, Laura. Actually, my honeymoon was spent going down the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Um, it was wonderful. We didn't know where we were going to stay. We would just drive until we found the place we liked. It was kind of fun. And Sheila says um, she just finished the Abigail Shawl. We'll work on Eileen Shaw and then the Holiday Cable Throw, all Christmas gifts. Wow, aren't you generous? That is so sweet of you. And um, <laughs> Mary and Gary Snyder says, ends are my least favorite thing to do. Yeah, talking about weaving in those loose ends. Yep, that's why you leave a nice long strand so they're easy to do. Um, instead of the old days of cutting them this short and then you don't know what to do with that. Um, we have eat see Sandra Harper, yeah, and um, and S, yeah, she says, um, she's always wanted to enter my county fair. <coughs> yeah, I think the biggest thing that keeps people from entering, getting back to the county fair thing, I'll go ahead and, and get the, the shameless promotion going here again on this little book. And, and this is this is a very easy book to read, I mean, it's it's very simple, but um, what this book is in trying to encourage you to do is just to tackle the administration part of it. You know, the showing up with your things on the right day, filling out the forms as needed. It can be quite, excuse me, it can be quite complicated um, for some. And I had to learn how to do this. For many years, my children and I, Hannah and Becky and, and the three boys, we did all sorts of things that the kids in the fair and that really helped help us all learn how to get, um, when to get there how to get one hour early so that you're at the head of the line or those lines that move very slowly I mean we, we used to come there with our uh, with a wagon full of stuff frame photographs um, my son done Becky and Caleb have done very well but Caleb has has brought home blue ribbons and photography at our fair which is downright impossible to do. I've never been able to do it. But one year he entered his things, and I think all, all you could only enter up to four. And I think he ended up pulling four blue ribbons out of them. that little stinker. <laughs> he was so good at that. We did cakes, decorated cakes, which, um, you know, later from doing fair entries and, and doing silly cakes and things, we learned eventually to do wedding cakes and, and did that for a, a short time in our family and, and we were able to make Becky's wedding cake. And so, I mean, being a part of the fair is wonderful. You can meet some really nice people. You can meet some grumpy people there too, but, you know, you mostly are just really with some really nice people. And um, it just, that's what this book is for. It's just to kind of help, um, help you understand the process so that you're not afraid of it. I mean, you know, a lot of times we're, we're, we're good at what we do in an area, but it's just the paperwork will keep us from going all the way with it. So but that's what the book is mostly with, is just explaining the paperwork a little bit and then just dive in. You know, make the phone call, ask the questions, no matter how dumb you think they are, the questions that you're asking. Just ask them anyway, and people usually are happy to answer them for you. Um, all right, so let me, I, I am trying to get on to everybody and say everybody, Greet everybody in the chat, but if I miss you, I just want to let you know it's not on purpose. I'm trying to to follow this as it comes in. Um, 
So we have Elaine from Edmonton, North Carolina. Well, Elaine, welcome. It's great, great to have you in the chat. Um, I go through through North Carolina at least once a month, um, going back and forth to South Carolina. And Sheila says, I would love to enter my work in a fair, but I live in New York City. Not too many of those kinds of fairs here. Um, Sheila, but you might want to look into the state fair in New York. I mean, you might have, you're going to have to get out of the city <coughs> to do it. But um, definitely look into the state fair. It might be worth, you know, I don't know where it is in relation to the city, to New York City. But, um, definitely, hmm, definitely check that out. I've never done the Maryland State Fair. I should look into it, but I, since I become more on the professional side of this, I, I decided I wasn't going to enter my stuff anymore. But um, legally, according to the rules, I can. Um, but I just, I, I just prefer to lay back on that and um, to give awards to the other people instead. That gives me a lot, a lot of joy to do that. Um, but I did enter the State Fair when I was in South Carolina back in the 1980s and um, got a couple blue ribbons, some some um, red second place ribbons as well. Never did get the grand prize there, um, but it was a lot of fun. I loved going to that state fair. They'd always have um, this lady over the intercom and, and would, they had this big rocket in the middle and they would always say, Johnny, meet your mother at the rocket, you know, over the loudspeaker. You'd hear that so many times, I mean, Trying to get people at the fair is just kind of funny, but you can hear that sleep when you feel it. But just eating the the fair food is so much fun. Thank God it's just once a year, um, but it sure is yummy. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. Um, thank you, Lashira Crochet. For your comment she likes the top i hope i hope you enjoy making this you maybe you even have some yarn in your stash that you can can use to make this and you can just you know, even make the collar a stash buster if you wanted to <coughs> and jane says she loves the waddle stitch I, I do too i like it better than straight up crochet or single crochet it just looks nicer in my opinion and you get so much more elasticity with it and I think it's it's not a yarn eater, so that's also a plus as well. We have is it I'm probably gonna say this wrong. Um Marie from France. I'll, I'll leave off the first word. Um, but so glad to have you. I know I'll mispronounce that. I don't have the French background like my husband does. And Randy, okay, I guess responding to the um we need a good news channel. Can't even watch the news anymore because I only subscribe to the news channel. <laughs> uh, but will it sell? That's the thing, right? Um, nobody wants to hear good news, they want to hear the bad, but I don't. I want to hear the good stuff. And um, <coughs> we have Denise Flora in our chat, and um, I'll have to check out that news. Um, channel bar sometimes so somebody has a good news channel on YouTube during the lockdown um, and NS says sweatshirt weather is coming up so I was wondering if Bonnie had a crochet collar to go over the sweatshirt yeah we talked about that um, no but that is a good idea you know what you could even do is just take like you know crochet flowers and doilies and things I've seen people do that and just kind of sew them or uh, kind of glue them onto shirts. I mean, that would be kind of a fun way to wear sweatshirts. Okay, and Mary and Gary Snyder, thank you for posting that. Um, the Great Frederick Fair in Frederick, Maryland is September 16th through the 24th. Um, enters, enter blankets and throws September 10th. Other crocheted knitted items September 10th, 14th, and 15th. You can find them online. There you go. Thank you, Mary. Um, I appreciate that information. Um, yeah, maybe that'll help somebody up in Frederick, Maryland. But if you're in Frederick, Maryland, you can also enter in Montgomery County just to let you know. Um, we're only about 30, 30 minutes. I mean, it's 
really close um, to go to the fairgrounds right off of uh, 270. It's, it's really close to you guys. Um, and Julie says, my crochet goes with me everywhere. Always have something to keep my hands busy when there is downtime. Yes, that makes so much sense, doesn't it? I mean, I just hate to be somewhere and I just have to sit and listen. I mean, I actually listen better if my hands are busy. I know that sounds weird. Um, I don't crochet during the sermon in church, although I wish I could, um, because I'm usually taking notes. Um, writing the notes helps me to remember as well. But if I could just listen and crochet, I would. But I know that would distract other people, so I don't do it then. Um, but having that pencil in my hand and just trying to take notes does help. But if it wasn't for that, I would love to sit and crochet. I tried doing that in a meeting once and people are looking at me like, you shouldn't be doing that. And I'm thinking, oh, it'll help me focus better. I'll understand what's being said better. But anyway, people don't understand us, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm okay with that. <laughs> we know we're right, right? <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Let's see here. <coughs> Just trying to catch any. We have Chalice Guard. Um, she says, Hi, Bonnie. Please try to get video of fawns to share with us. Oh, I may have to do that. Um, if I do, I'll probably post it on my Facebook page. Uh, I don't really have a way to do that on the YouTube. I, there's a way to do shorts, but for whatever reason, my, my page does not allow me to do that right now. Or I'm just not, I'm too dense to figure it out, one or the other. Hmm. But I did take some video of that last night right before the storm. All right. Do I have a leaf stitch that I can use to make an afghan? I'm using a camo colorway to make an afghan for my son. I thought leaves would be the perfect stitch. I can't think of anything right off Wanda. I mean, I could probably point you to some other places. I've seen like the the surface um, leaves. I mean, they would probably be fairly easy to make um, using front and back post double crochets. And you could graph it, um, but uh, I don't have anything right now. I'm sorry about that. <coughs> oh dear, Wanda said her internet went out, had to sign in with her phone, oh dear. And I was connecting kind of weird as well, but hopefully it'll it'll be okay. Um, so let's see. Hey, Esther. Esther, I'm so glad that you're back. Um, and we did mention, I didn't mention names, but we did mention that your mom, it's also Esther's mom, has uh, one who just had emergency surgery. We are so glad that she is better and we will pray for her, Esther, okay? Just to let you know. I hope you're doing all right. I imagine you're kind of bleary eyed from all the activity last night. But, um, uh, let's see. We have Mrs. Debbie LW um, saying, and, and Denise liked the shawl. Well, good. Thank you. Uh, isn't that fun? It's just a simple pattern. And I forgot to tell you. <coughs> But this is um, this is just the granny square, the granny square shawl. I did add some tassels. Um, the tassels is a tutorial on the the cable throw video. I do have a tutorial on the um, the tassels. But this is already up on my YouTube channel. It has been for a couple of years. It's just the um, and I do have a link in the video description below. I use different yarn in the video, but you can use any yarn. as any any yarn at all. Just make sure you match your hook. To your yarn size and and go to town and just go until you get the size you like it's that easy so the tutorial is on the channel already the popcorn cowl however that'll be coming in the future so i neglected to do that earlier all right um let me just make sure there's nobody else um oh daphne pride in the chat um she said i take my crochet with me to the doctors also yeah um, I just want to make sure, uh, okay, Rita says, Aaron isn't a brand, it's a type of yarn, that's true, 
Um, true Aaron is wool, but Aaron weight is comparable to a U.S. four or a thick or so did not a six is a number five. That is correct. Um, it is a number four in the U.S. system. Um, and, and depending on how purist people want to get with that term, um, oftentimes it's limited to even just the kind of the off-white color. Um, but I think a lot of people use that in a general term as a weight term, in, in the, the equivalent of saying a medium weight or a number four or a worsted. Um, on all the, the Craft Yarn Council of America charts, that's the way that it, that word is used. So, so yeah, depending on how pure you want to get with the use of that, um, you know, that can change from place to place. And Rita also says, um, Almost any yarn shop in Ireland will have some air and wool, but your best selection is probably on the West Coast, like Donegal, Galway, or larger gift shops. Also try Donegal Tweed for break. Oh yeah, I love Donegal Tweed. Um, oh wow, and Sheila is going to be spending wow, time in Galway. Wow, that's fantastic. I, I'll, I'll let you know too, when I was in Ireland, I had a hard time finding yarn. I did look for it, and I did find some. Um, I was not real thrilled with what I found. Um, I think I wasn't in the ba the best, absolute best spots to to you know, to get it. But but anyway. Um, okay, Rita says almost any yarn shop in Ireland. Yeah yeah yeah. Okay, I just read that one. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I think. Okay, so I missed the one about. Okay, there it is. Sheila says she is going to Ireland in October. Should have gone last month, but my relatives came down with COVID. I think you're going to enjoy the um, the cool weather much more. I I went in. Um, I believe it was September. And uh, she like definitely take a take a jacket, take a jacket with you, or a you know a, at least a medium. I mean, you, don't, you probably won't need your coat, but take something, a windbreaker for sure, especially if you go to the cliffs of Moher. But um, yeah, enjoy. I think I think you're gonna enjoy the cooler weather instead of being there where it's hot. Um, and I B Serenity says I'm pretty new at wearables. I usually make amigurumi. Never say that word, forgive me. Everybody says it differently. Is there anyone that can tell me if the cross stitch is supposed to be only in the front loop? That's a great question. Um, and it, it and my answer is it depends on how you use it. If you use it, if it's part of the pattern as surface texture, it's generally only in the front loop if you're going to continue on making fabric. Now I use it also as a connecting stitch. And in that case, I will be going through the top two loops of one panel and then the top two loops of another. So working through four strands um, as I as I um, make the neural stitch from left to right, right-handed. Um, and it also can make a really nice just border on the outside of a throw or something. So. Um, it really depends on how you want to use it. You can use it both ways. You, again, you can use it surface texture, just the front loop. And the other ways you would go through both loops or multiple loops. So I hope that makes sense. But um, yeah, it's, it's a great stitch. I know it drives people absolutely nuts. But I love using that stitch, which, you know, if you've done any of my stuff a time or two. We have Kelly, Kelly Dye in the chat. She says... I just submitted to enter the Yule Tree Throw into my county fair. Kelly, tell me how that goes. I want to hear of a report, okay? Let me know how that goes. I want to see pictures of your ribbon when you get them. <laughs> that would be so cool to share with everybody. Um, oh, um, and Rita says um, to Hannah, my Irish roots are showing, but I love to use Aaron um, for Bonnie's Cable Project, so I stock up every year in Ireland. Yeah, you know something too, talking about that color is honestly, it's the best color to show the texture. It really is. 
I know there are a lot of other reasons why it's that color. It's because the natural lanolins from, from the animal's fiber stays in it and it makes it that color. Um, but yeah, I mean, those light colors like that make it pop, make this texture stand out better really than any other color. I, I have used all sorts of colors with them. And if you, by the way, talking again about the fair, I know I'm talking a lot about this this time. If you have a category of the Aaron or the Irish, I, they call it Irish Isle category at my fair, my local county fair. And if you're a highly texturized throw into that category and it's not the Aaron color, it's going to be disqualified. So that almost happened to me one year. And then what happened is the, um, is the, the person who was overseeing the crochet, she always goes to bat for all of her uh, people who, um, who enter into her group. She wants to help every project do as best as it can. She's just, she was just an amazing woman. She's retired from the position now, but her name was um, Teresa. And so Teresa Morse, I believe is her name. And fantastic woman, just, just served heroically, served all the entries heroically, the people who are entering. And, um, so if you have an Irish Isle category for throws, it needs to be that Aaron, that off-white, yellowish kind of color. Don't put your pretty blues and, and reds into that category. Pick another category um, that it'll fit in. Usually, and that's what, again, that's what this book is all about. There's usually more than one way, one, one or two categories, sometimes more with some crochet things to choose from. So if you put something that's at my fair that's not that color into that Irish Isle category it will be disqualified if you know if um if the uh, crochet chair person doesn't do something about it so just a little. I know this is so, it's so technical <coughs> I need to let Hannah go um so if I missed your if your comment or your question and you want to contact me please just email me bonniebay at me.com and I will be you know happy to respond okay we have I see a new name here um Joni's not so fast so that's great not so fast k-n-o-t-s-e-w for so that is great um I'm so glad that you're listening it's so great to have you here um uh Well, wow, it's a really interesting conversation. Um, I'm just kind of hitting on some. Then we have Enyeda. I cannot pronounce it, but a Spanish name, probably a beautiful Spanish name when said the right way. So glad that you're here. And um, Angels um, from New York Yonkers. So glad to have you guys with us. And um, Rita says, I'll look at my shopping resources and try to do some next week. Well, <coughs> well, I need to, um, well, I need to go ahead and let Hannah be released. I wanted to read something encouraging, and I was actually reading this this morning, um, kind of a slow go through the book of Isaiah, as well as I've been reading Ezekiel as well. So I'm reading from the book, guys, this is fun that gives life um and there's so much that i read in just this one chapter i could read the entire chapter it's so filled with with gold but i'm just going to shorten it and just read a little bit here um this was just really encouraging especially coming coming out of covid and and um i'm thinking of of uh, of catherine in our chat as well as i read this and all of you guys are who are overcoming or struggling it says, and this is Isaiah 40. I'm going to start verse 28 and go through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator, big C, of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, that'd be me, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. 
But they who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Uh, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isn't that encouraging? That just makes me feel better just hearing those words and just knowing that that is the truth. Well, I hope you guys have a fantastic week. Thanks again for joining me. And um, I hope to be able to sing that song for you next week. Hopefully we'll be able to talk a little bit better and not cough as much. As I, but um, anyway, thank, thank God you can't catch anything through the internet. Although I am negative, praise the Lord. <laughs> um, but anyway, have a wonderful week and we'll see you next Friday. God bless. Bye-bye.